you want to learn a little bit about body work, stay tuned. In this video, I'm working on a 2002 Volkswagen Bug. And I thought it'd be a good idea to just shoot some of the, uh, the steps I take when I do body work. Uh, I get a lot of requests if I'm ever going to make a video for showing body work and paint. In this video, I don't actually show the paint work. I've said for the past two years now that I'm going to make a uh, plexiglass or a plastic box that I can put my camera in. I actually did try to shoot uh, some footage in a paint booth once and my camera seemed to eat all the paint instead of what I was painting. So I... Uh, I got it cleaned up. I think the second time I tried it, I, I trashed the camera. So this is my third or fourth camera. Uh, body work and uh, mechanics with cameras sometimes don't uh, always pan out real well. But anyhow, I will eventually show you one on paint. And I, uh, there's actually a course that I, I promote. i put the link to the, in the description for it uh, down at the bottom. But go look at that. That course will teach you I mean, anything you want to know about body work, how to paint and stuff. But now in this video, I do show my uh, my uh, priming technique when I'm priming a door, so you can kind of see how I'm overlapping the, the spray pattern from the spray gun, and that's pretty much about the same as I'm doing on paint. Uh, a little slower running with the primer because I want the primer to go on thick. Uh, usually, I've, if I've got something I have done a lot of body work on, it's got some damage to it. I'll put at least three coats of primer on it to um, uh, get the build up, so when I sand it, it you know sands out smooth, but uh, primer will remove really small little just like pings, not really didn't necessarily dings, but pings. Uh, you can't really feel, you could, I mean, I've seen people actually fill in dings with the primer, but it's going to shrink. So you want to work all your dings and stuff out with, uh, either get your dings pulled out if you can't, and working with a little bit of body fillers or um, glazing putties. But in this video, you just kind of get an idea of what it takes to do some body work. Um, I show a damaged door. With some dings and dents in them that I, where I use a, a stud uh, it's an electric stud gun that puts a stud on the on the metal itself and you can pull I don't use the type that uh, the old school way was to drill holes in the metal with a drill and uh, put a puller that kind of screwed into it but when you did that it would make the metal pull up and uh, jag it outwardly and that's that's really hard to fix and plus you have a hole there then uh, and of course, in the old days, people thought that uh, the way to do body work was to drill a thousand holes in the metal and skim over body filler so the body filler goes through the holes and hold on. That's not how body filler works. It either bonds to the metal or the paint, or it doesn't. So, if you think, if someone's ever told you that, that's the wrong way of doing it. I also, um, this bug had a uh, smashed rocker panel, and it was smashed beyond being able to pull because it was, it was actually concave the other way, and I ripped holes in it trying to pull it out so what I did is I just cut that section of metal out and um, I took uh, just uh, I think it's it was either 16 or 14 gauge sheet metal and took it to the good part of the, the rocker panel and bent it to make that shape of, of the curve of it and then I went ahead and uh, uh, tacked or stitch welded in and did the body work on that and the third thing is and I, don't, I don't really cover a lot on it because I've got other videos but uh, I touched base on the back uh, bumper being uh, peeling. It had a lot of uh, paint peeling, so I sanded that down. And uh, I think I do have a video uh, for how to wet sand, and I'll put that uh, link down in the description as well if you want to see how to wet sand. And I think that's about it. So let's dive on into the video. We'll start with the rocker panel that's on this uh, Volkswagen. You can see that it's got a smash, and it looks like in this picture, and I unfortunately didn't do a video, but in this picture it looks like it's just got a dent in it. But what's actually happened is it's caved it in, so it's actually curved the opposite direction and the, cur the rocker panel's curved outward, plus it's pushed it downward. So the rocker panel's also pushed, if I had a picture of below, you could see it's bowed down. So I've got two different, or actually three or four different angles I've got to correct. This is a terrible photo. I think I took it with my phone, but it's the only one I have. When I, what I did is I took my little grinding wheel <clears throat> with about 50 or 60 grit on it and sit there and ground the dent down until I got to bare metal. And then I used my electric stud gun, which I'll put one of those down in the uh, descriptions, a link to how you can get one. But um, I used my stud gun and, and welded studs along the crease of the dent. 
and then I took just a propane torch and heated the metal to weaken it and I used my puller trying to pull it out but all it would do was just actually rip holes because it's that uh, rocker panel is really thick metal and um, actually I think it's like 12 gauge because it didn't seem it didn't seem as light as regular metal but I could not pull it so I started cutting into it with uh, my cutoff wheel in order to get to weaken it and to help bring it out but I've it, I in turn finally decided it would just be better just to cut that section out and put a piece of metal into it and you can see here I went ahead and cut the section out and you see I've got a floor jack with a uh, piece of metal on it pushing upward before I'd actually put that on there I'd actually took the hammer and tapped up the bent down spot and without that section of metal in there it kind of come up easy now with the jack and that plate of metal and piece pushing upward on it you can see that crease right there it's inside so with the jack pushing upward from the bottom I would take a flat edge or straight edge type punch and just kinda lightly tap that crease so that kind of pushed it back and recreated the uh, crimp that they put there to make that bend I then took a uh, 14 gauge piece of metal body metal and right there where the rocker panel is still got the right shape I conformed it to that to that bend and then I cut it out to match that hole size using my stud gun I welded a stud to the rocker panel real close to where I'm going to be welding that way I got a good solid ground for my MIG welder using the MIG welder I stitch weld the uh, piece of metal that I cut out and put in there I didn't actually show it but from after this after the stitch weld when you do that then you go back in and fill in between each welds and that kinda gives you pretty much a solid weld but I did it quick and fast to keep the heat down from warping any other part of the body metal now what I've done here is I've used a short haired strand fiberglass put one even coat over top of uh, the welding that I did and then uh, once it started setting up I used a cheese grater is what they call it it's, it's a I think a body filler file but uh, used that and graded off the, the highs and stuff just to give me a quick uh, level before I actually start sanding it the fiberglass worked out real well I just took uh, 40 grit uh, sandpaper and then to knock it down flat then I used uh, I think went 60 and 80 and it came out really close so then I went ahead and just used a lightweight body filler and skimmed it and then sanded it down and you can see it come out pretty nice I think I had to go back over some glazing putty but uh, overall it came out really sharp and hardly any work as you can see after primering it the job came out really well it, it didn't take very much effort to get that straightened up even though it did look pretty terrible I did spend quite a bit of time trying to pull that dent and I probably should have realized right off the bat when I was trying to pull it and it kept pulling holes in it instead of pulling the metal out that it would be best just to cut it out and put a new piece of metal in but this is primered now we're going to move on to the door where I'm going to actually show more more steps and actually body work because uh, I did not videotape this I had taken pictures for the customer but let's go ahead and dive into the body work on the door and that way you can see actual uh, body work in action a lot of you written in on you know on the steps of doing body work or painting and stuff like that and me doing the work by myself and video on this by myself sometimes I have the hardest time trying to show every step so I'm gonna to try to make a point to show all the steps but in this one you can see that this door has got a massive dent there I mean it looks worse than what it really is and then you got some pretty good things and it's got just a few little dings here and there I don't know if I can catch it down like that. And just some of those. So I've got it up on the stand. So I can work comfortably with it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some tools I have. I've got a dent puller that um, that actually doesn't hurt the paint. I'm going to try pulling it. Because the more you can pull these dents uh, without a lot of excessive body filler, the better off you're going to be. You have a lot of people or in a lot of body shops that would take a door that's got these little mild dings in it and pretty much hit this whole door with 80 grit and then just coat it with body filler and start air filing it off. Well, 
that's kind of a crappy way of doing it because um, you don't want body filler all in this door uh, you know it's just you know the less body filler you can go with the better off you're going to be I've got several diff different type of pullers some that you actually weld a stud and I may have to do it like to this one here I'm going to have to weld a stud into it or even here and I've got little pullers to attach to just little mild ones to a, like a slide puller to an actual gun that actually will go around the dent and and I can just crank it like a pop rivet gun and it just pulls it until you can get to the level where you want it to be. So we're going to try these different methods. I'll show how to sand down the area uh, to put filler in it because no matter, this one's got a crease in it so no matter how I pull it out it's going to have a crease. I would go from behind the door but most of these doors I'm not sure if I can get it in this video. Let's see what we can do. You can see that it's got a panel on the inside and it just bolts but that window regulator uh, and the speaker and all that stuff and the wiring it's going to take some doing to get all that stuff off and I'm trying to keep the time down that's one thing in like in a body shop you've got to figure out the value of of the time you can put into doing the job exactly to the specs right or you know doing the job to the quickest you know and still do a decent job like I said I'm not going to sand this whole door down with 80 grit you know which is a rough sandpaper and spread body fill all over it I'm going to try to fix the dents the best I can as quick as I can and then I'll probably fill some of them that are mild in order to get it done but uh, uh, but we, I am going to show the steps then how to prime it and then you know put the sealer on it and paint it of course now I won't be painting the door on the car I have to go on the car and then I'll be doing what they call a blend where I shoot the color across the front of the door to the back of the door and the rocker panel was damaged on this beetle which I think I did a video on that if not I will be but um, okay as I pointed out that dent there looks pretty heavy it's still kind of shallow and normally I would probably heat it or spoon it from behind but because there's always a possibility when you get a dent like this, you've got too much metal in the door, so you can pull it out, but then you're going to have it popping. So, what we'll do is we'll use my puller. This is a paintless dent puller. Uh, these little, they give you these little uh, studs, and you glue them on with a hot glue gun, basically. It, of course, this, the uh, glue that comes with this is designed not to remove the paint or blister it. So the temp's just a little bit lower, and it's just basically a heat-activated glue. And they make these uh, studs in little different shapes. But since this uh, dent's a little bit elliptical, I picked an elliptical stud. So I just put a little bit of the hot glue on it, and then just stick it where I want to try to pull the dent out. Now one reason why I'm showing using this tool is because one I wanted to show you, you know, what a paintless uh, dent puller looks like. In other words, this tool was designed to be able to pull dents uh, without having to repaint it. In other words, you just get rid of the glue and then you can, just, you know, kind of color sand and buff it out and it looks great. <clears throat> of course, that's not going to be the case in this door. This door is actually dented and heavy enough that it's going to require uh, grinding and some filler and stuff like that. But I did want to show you what a paintless dent puller did. And <clears throat> any time that you can pull the dents out of a panel without having to really grind or mess up the paint and you can use a, a paintless dent puller, then I would go for it because the less damage to the paint and the surrounding area, the better the job's going to come out. Um, some people just won't, don't want to take that kind of time to do this. I do. I mean, because I don't believe in sanding things really hard and putting deep scratches in it and then have that come back on you later when you paint. And I've seen plenty of that kind of work. But I did just want to show you what a paintless dent puller looked like and uh, the method of using it. Okay, it's been left about five minutes where I put the little puller on here. And I'm going to adjust the pads to fit the dent. Just spread them out a little bit, get a little bit of pull in. And it 
pulled a good portion of it out. There's still a minor dent here. And I had a feeling it was going to be that way because it's right here in this crease. And this is not going to be strong enough to do that kind of job. So what I can do is I can now pull here in this spot and that should level it out for the most of the part. I have a actual, I'll grind to the metal here and have a stud welder. It'll put a little stud on here and I can just pull it with a puller. This one may be the same way. It's kind of severe, but uh, we'll see. Okay, I pulled that one dent that, or at least I've tried. I won't know until I pull this off. The one I thought was pretty severe with the, the same unit I've been doing with the puller. And this time it left the rest. Sometimes it goes, sticks onto the little stud, and sometimes it sticks to the uh, panel you're pulling it in out of. But all you really got to do is just sit there and use this thing. Just kind of give it a, a saw kind of motion or just a slide scrape. And this stuff comes off with a enamel reducer as well that doesn't hurt the paint. You just kind of rub up some enamel reducer get it off. It's not your typical uh, hot glue gun, so don't try to use a regular hot glue gun because that will stick to the paint. This was designed not to stick to the paint. And it left a little bit of dimple right there, so that's not too bad. Okay, now I'm going to grind this to the metal in this area so that I can put my old stud, stud welder on there and put the stud right in that crevice and then I pull it out that way. Okay, now what I've done is I've just used, I think this is a 50 grit uh, disc, a uh, little on a die grinder. It doesn't have to be anything really severe. I mean, you could use a stone, but there's no sense in really cutting the metal that bad. We don't want to thin it out too much. So pretty much just remove the metal, maybe if I, I just a, a micrometer of a metal just scratching it, but uh, now it's ready for a uh, dip pulling. Okay, this is the stud welder, and you can change out these tips for different things for like shrinking or put a stud like this in. I do just slide that stud in there. Go for the deepest crits. You have to make sure it makes contact. And sometimes it'll burn the paint. Now that there's a stud there, I can use a slide puller designed for this is actually designed to grab hold of that stud. All we're going to do here is just now grind the stud off. I'm just going to use a cutoff wheel. Then we're going to be Now I'm just going to dress it up with this 50 grit wheel.
one reason why too I pulled it was this it was hard to get in the camera view but following this ledge it kind of pumped up and now that I pulled it now it's pulled back flat and it's going to take a little bit of filler not much I'll probably use fiberglass so I'll usually always put my first coat on fiberglass unless it's just like a, a mild wave but it's still got a little bit of dip in it so I'm still going to dress it just a little bit <laughs> You notice I taped it off and put some cardboard over the glass and stuff. You always want to, you know, protect things like that. You don't have to go and have to replace the glass because you were doing the grinding and the uh, metal work around the glass. <clears throat> okay, this is mostly pull up. It's still got us a hair of a bit of a dip, uh, real mild and faint. And since this was uh creased in right here it'll have to have a little bit of fiberglass put in it but this is a high of course when it was shining I could see that that the only thing I don't like about that uh, kind of hot glue type puller is sometimes it'll put little outward uh, pooches in it and you can use a Teflon stick and tap them back in of course this one's kind of high but like I said this whole dip was kind of severe it was kind of pushed in pretty hard so you're gonna have too much metal when you try to pull it back out so uh, the studs they were going on like they did uh, that's pretty good because it come when it heats in that one center spot and cools it kind of shrinks the metal so here we're gonna have to tap this back down and it's a little high I hit it with the wheel just to kind of see how high it was and it's hard to see the uh, shading but it's like a darker silver than a brighter silver and that tells me there's a spot there and you can use two kinds of hammers you can use one that's got a real severe point if you want to just kind of really direct it down more and then if you're trying to get down a whole area more at once more of a blunt tip I'm going to go ahead and try the the pointy one and if you don't have these hammers you can always use a punch if you have one but you don't hit this hard or go at it hard or anything like that Your fingers can tell you a lot of what's going on. You can feel the humps when you run, run your hand back and forth. And that's something you can't show in a video. When you're on your hands you can feel the dips and the waves and the stuff. So far this it's pretty close. Like I said the most severe dip is right here. And I could probably use more studs and pull this out a bit more. But this is actually an economy job I'm doing for someone. Um, and two, the chance of you having a, a stud puller and stud welder and uh, all these other type of tools I'm using is not likely but it's just one method like I said you could get that dent puller that uh, uses the hot glue or you know you can take the back side of the door off and start pushing from the other side there is the traditional where you drill into the metal and screw your puller into it I don't like those because it leaves holes in the door which means places for rust to get into uh, and no matter how much you cover it up with body filler or whatever but that's some methods. Okay, now here's more of a time consuming piece. Sort of. It can be boring. But this door, I can hear yeah, there. It's the dense ripples. Dent. Scratch, but. The boring part is you'll find all these little scratches, or all these dents rather. And I'm like, let's get one that's good and see on the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of 100 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to sand down inside that little hole. And then kind of around. Alright. So 
So basically, it's read and read. <laughs> what am I trying to say? It's, found, it's a repeat and repeat. Rinse and repeat all the way across the door. For every little dim, dimple and scratch, and I'll show you what I'm going to do after I go through and get all these done. But what it is, it's why it's shiny, it's easy to find these. And there's many techniques. You can block the whole door down with a paint stick, with a dry sand, rather, just with a paint stick. Go across it and skim it, and then it'll show up shiny areas wherever the uh, dents are. Or you can do it this way. It's up to you. But I'll find them this way. And then, um, then I'll sand around and then we'll put some filler on it and I'll show you that step. Okay, I'm going to show you. I was doing it earlier. You see that little dip? Okay, the, how I'm finding that is anytime that you can use a straight line fluorescent lights, they actually make a tool for this handheld, smaller bulbs, straight line, it actually has a grid on the front, but this way you can find highs and lows in my paint job, but and here in the, in the shop, I'm just using the fluorescent light that's there, and I can find the, the dents. Okay, now what I'm going to do, as you can see, I've sanded all these places on the door, and what I'm going to do now is use the DA, but I'm not going to sand out my roughest spots, I'm just going to kind of feather edge around it. Okay, I've sanded all the spots with a, D, with a DA with 180 grit. Went around the places that I sanded with 100 grit. Um, I didn't try to sand out the 100 grit scratches. I wanted to leave them there, but it's fine if you do. But at least this way I can find where the actual dip is by looking at the shading and the color, the shading and the sanding spots. Now the next step is I want to wipe the door down with 100 or with a uh, an amor reducer. To degrease it or any, any type of degreaser for this for auto, auto body and then um, then I'll start commence with the filling I'll start off with these this one here and this one here because those are the heaviest dents that were in the store and I'll use fiberglass uh, or basically it's a it's not full-blown glass it's kind of a mix of uh, resin and glass it's, it's easier to sand out but it's good for getting deep areas because you can use lightweight body filler but you'll have to coat it several times and too thick a body filler is just not that great so to the next step now here I'm going to spread uh, fiberglass which is not like fiberglass like you think of a, a resin and a cloth this is actually a, a short strand uh, fiberglass filler it's it's fairly strong it's great for filling up deep dents and since this one dent right here I'm, I'm putting this on it's pretty deep so that saves you from because lightweight body filler does not actually build real real thick real quick you have to usually put quite a few layers on it this fiberglass will build up pretty pretty quick and then I want to put it up here on this edge because this edge is slightly dented in and it is an edge so you want that edge to be strong not that lightweight body filler is real weak but if something hit it it could chip easier if you've got something like fiberglass on it it's going to be really really strong and whenever I'm spreading it I try to spread it out smooth like it's gonna like it's gonna look now granted it's got streaks in it and little little high spots and stuff but what I'm gonna use and I'll show that here in a little bit is a a body filler rasp or what most people refer to as a cheese grater to kinda to run off the highs or off the little um, edges that the spreader leaves on it. And anytime you have like little uh, splotches or anything, like globs that's fallen on the door, while it's still workable, I'd go ahead and remove them. That way you don't have to try to worry about trying to sand those little spots down that specific area. And you can see here in the door, uh, 
the fiberglass that I put on it looks like it's got some crazy looking lines in it. That's where I ran what some people refer to as a cheese grater made for body filler or a body filler rasp. Either way it's just like a little blade, a little tool that um, you can just run over it before it hardens up and just kind of grate it off the uh, the filler. Um, this saves you time from having, if, if you put it on, even though I put it on thin and, and uh, skimmed it out pretty level, it still saves you time from knocking down the bulk of it, especially if you're using fiberglass. Body filler, lightweight body filler is easy enough to sand, but if you're using fiberglass like I would have done here, a short strand fiberglass filler, uh, it's easier to use a cheese grater to kind of knock it down first. I just wanted to show you here what it was like to uh, spread lightweight body filler. The door had a few little dings left right here. I worked out most of the dents with the uh, paintless dent puller. Uh, there's still just a few that were little dings and considering the time that I wanted to put in on this door, um, taking a shortcut by spreading body filler in that area. It was kind of rippled and warped anyways right there. So I just wanted to show you what it's like to spread some body filler. I usually uh, apply it and then I wipe off the excess with my uh, uh, paddle. I use cardboard for uh, putting my fillers on, but you can buy plastic uh, paddles to keep it on. Uh, but you just pull off the excess, you just pull it smooth as you can, and then you just uh, wipe off the excess and, uh, and just spread it as smooth as you can get it. You don't want to leave pits, but if you do, you know, it's better leave pits than leave a bunch of highs. That way you can, you know, you can always go back and coat it again until you get all the little pits out of it. Here's another example of just using the, the body filler rasp or the cheese grating. The nice thing about it is you do this just when the filler is just starting to set up. You don't do it right after you put it on. You kind of let it wait till it's just starting to get hard, but not hard yet. And the nice thing about running this grater over is you can see your highs and lows uh, right off the bat. And you don't dig in, you don't push hard or anything like that. You just kind of run it over real gentle-like. and. Uh, It'll take off the highs of the body filler. This makes it a lot easier when it comes to sanding it and trying to get it level. Because a lot of times if you get the filler really high, uh, you'll be spending more time trying to cut down that high spot than actually leveling the whole thing out. When you sand, you don't try to sand all the filler off. A lot of people when they do try to do body work for the first time and use fiberglass or regular body filler stuff, they try to sand every bit of it back off. And that's not your goal. Is your goal is to get level with the surface of the door. Now I'm using the fiberglass here is basically to fill in the deeper part of the dents. And here it didn't quite fill all that little dip right there. Of course I didn't put it on real thick either. So I'll use a little wire brush and scuffy that down in there, and then put on a little bit more fiberglass. And I'm using fiberglass because this is the edge, so it needs to be stronger than just plain old body filler. So, but um, to show what I was doing and sanding, I'll sand this spot here. And I use an 80 grit sandpaper. I use a cheese grater, which I think I showed that, um, and just knocked off some of the highs. Again, I didn't really put it on that thick. And you can kind of, just like in the water, if you ever go to the lake and you can see darker and lighter spots, the darker spots are the deeper spots, the lighter is the more shallow. So. fillers that pack up the sandpapers and you have to kind of pick that out or get a new piece of it packs it really too bad. I was talking here and you couldn't hear me because the sandpaper and the camera wasn't the right angle to catch my voice but what I was talking about is if I 
the body filler when you it'll, quite often it'll pack up your sandpaper when you're sanding it and you have to either get a new piece or you can use a wire brush cleaner or whatever but one of the fixes to that is you can mix the body filler up a little hotter and it won't pack up in the paper the problem is if you mix it too hot there's bleaches in the uh, hardener for the body filler and that can bleed back through your paints and stain your paints eventually it may won't show up right away but it'll come back later so that was just all I was talking about in this uh, part here another thing to point out is when I'm sanding this I'm not pushing down hard at all I'm just running it over the surface if you start bearing down you'll start creating dips I've been still sanding with 80 grit kind of feathering out I try to keep my sanding to the confines of what I'm like the filler of the glass that I'm sanding so there's no need to you know put 80 grit scratches all over the entire door it's one reason why my sandpaper isn't the full length of the paint stick it's about the length of the one on the area that I'm working with. And it's about ready really to go to a different grid now. In the midst of the, you know, the rough of the paper, the faster and the better it's going to cut it and through. It gets to a point sometimes that the, when you get more of a flat surface, the finer paper will actually level it off there. So we'll jump to a 120 and I'll put it on a sweat board. This is a smaller, what some people term as a sweat board. They make them longer and longer, and you can get, this is like a roll, this paper comes in a roll. This is 120. Um, it's a really aggressive paper. So you can see. How it cuts. And plus this picks up when you're ready to get scratches. Now granted, when I go put that body filler over it, I'll be using 80 grit again to kind of knock it down. But, but not for the main thing. I'll just knock, knock, off, knock it off at 80 and then I'll start jumping the finer papers. Then I'll run this way. And just to anything to find the contour of that door. Okay, as I pointed out, it's hard to see with the camera, but it's a little low right here on this edge. That's why I used the puller, because even though it didn't look as that bad, it was still kind of smashed in pretty good. So, and it's a strong point. So I want to use fiberglass to build this edge up. It gives you something, because lightweight body filler, you can mold it, and, you know, and you can shape it, but it's not as strong as fiberglass. So if you want a good strong edge, and then, like I said, it's low, and the sandpapers didn't get down in there to that low, so I use a wire brush and just kind of I'm kind of sanding the low spot. Let me get in there to the, the uh, spot the sandpaper couldn't get into. That way, the body filler when I put it on there is going to adhere. Is that you know that's the big thing is as long as you make the stuff stick on there, it's it'll be there forever. And of course, if you put it on like massively thick, like you know, a half inch thick or more, like I've seen some jobs, uh, you're talking about crack out and falling out sometime later. But in this case, we're just basically you know skimming, you know, just some uh, dings and dents and waves, and, uh, and this one should turn out pretty decent. Okay, this is 80 grit sandpaper. I usually try never to go anything rougher than 80. Um, and then I usually work it like 80, 100, or 120 to use it to 180. The reason why I do that is to keep the scratches down because if you cut this stuff with like 36 or 40 grit or 60 grit and you know you don't smooth it out, I don't care how many layers of urethane primer you have, eventually it'll shrink and show up. So your best bet is to keep it as fine as you can. It means you might have to work a little extra, but you know, a lot of people think, okay, I got to stand that. That's wrong. You don't want to sand it in the middle because you're taking away the shape that you're trying to create. This is just a thin skim over the door. It had, when I ran my hand over it, I could feel just a lot of little waves, just little humps, just here and there, because the door had quite a few big heavy dings right here. So what you do is you use the good part of the doors, or the good part of your surface area, to help guide you to shape it. You see how I'm coming around, and I. 
and it's also weight distribution in your hands. So I'm, I'm kind of pushing a little bit with my palm, like this under the good part. To kind of, to guide me. I'm still putting pressure with my fingers. And when it, what happens is I'm going to start feather edging this out where I won't feel it and it'll, it'll, you'll see it blend in, kind of like this right here is. Uh, I'm just using a paint stick. Now I use a 120 on a sweat board, which is a bigger water board. You can use air tools like an air file or a jitterbug. The problem with that is because of the way they're designed, it can actually create waves. It's always better to go back over by hand with a sweat board or a paint stick to get an actual smooth level surface. Um, I've, and of course, if you've got a large area you're carving out, you're going to use an air file, but in something like this, it doesn't really take that long, and you get a, a nice flat job. It looks really good. Now I'm going to use what I call a sweat board. I mean, it's just a big sanding pad paddle, and I've got 120 grit on it. You can use 100 or 120. And this gives you a much more leveling cut. A lot of times you'll find that the finest sandpaper will actually feather it out a lot better on the edges than the rough sandpaper will. Okay, same thing for the bristle of life. You use the good part, kind of cut down to the... Okay, <clears throat> all the spots are sanded out. Yeah, I'll sand that real nice. Just need a small skim. They're just little mild dings. I don't know if there's door dings or what here, but uh, you now you see all these scratches in the door, and you know they really could be sanded out. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a DA sander. A DA sander. This one's pneumatic, uses air. Not everybody's going to have air tools. You can now actually buy these electric. Six inch. The attachments and everything are the same. It's just electric. So, you know, if you don't have air tools uh, or a big enough compressor to run one, you can go get an electric one. Okay, I've sanded the door. And you can sand up to where you fill. I wouldn't sand on what you, you know, put in there as far as filler because you don't want to take it down. Um, but I sanded up to, mostly got rid of all the heavier scratches. There's still a few scratches in there. I'm not sure if you can see it the camera or not, but these are 80, 80 grit scratches. Uh, and luckily, urethane primer especially two or three coats is going to be able to cover and fill up an 80 grit because it tells you on the can or on the specs that um, the 80 grit primer or urethane primer will fill 80 grit scratches. Of course, you know, who wants to put that to the test? So anyways, this is uh, sanded out. Now what I'm going to do is wipe it down with uh, some detergent water, you know, water with a little bit of liquid detergent in it, and then wipe it down with a, an amor reducer, some type of degreaser cleaner. And then um, I'm going to glaze all these spots and wet sand it. And that'll give me a chance to wet sand down in here because you're not going to, you could probably try to DA a curve like that. That'd be kind of stupid. And then kind of go over the edges. And of course, on this door here, it sinks down here. And it's just going to be easier to wet sand that. And as for the glazing, buddy, you just want to overlap it. You just want to go thin. It's not, we're not trying to. To build or anything, we're just really trying to get rid of scratches, pinholes, bits, a little bit of leveling, but bad example today. Uh, this place I'm putting I'm using is kind of getting old, so I'm probably showing up purchasing new. Okay, there's the door with all the uh, glazing putty sanded off, or sanded down, leveled out. And some of those scold areas where I had to go get some new glazing putty because the other was just getting too uh, old. So, 
I masked off the things I don't want sprayed, like up in here in the, the door hole latch. There's no sense in spraying primer down in there because it can mess up how the door handle operates. I am not going now. There's some spot, spots that need to be used with a scuffy pad, like this corner here. It's kind of a little bit tiny dip, so I run a scuffy pad over the shinier parts. And then I wipe the door down. And up here, working this stand, I went down to the metal. I'm going to use an etchant primer. It's what I use is DuPont's Veriprom, but they've gotten rid of the DuPont name, but they still carry Veriprom. But I'll be using that before I put down the urethane primer. It just helps fight against rust. And uh, actually, I, I'll not quite often. I'll use a, use an etchant primer on any of the body filling and stuff I do as well. That way, it kind of adheres, needs down into it. Yeah, that's a Scotch Brite scuffy pad. I quite often use the. Uh, red oxide color especially before priming but you want to get all your edges um, like that little tip I was looking anything shiny around the around the corners down in these still a little shiny around here you want to get this and the reason why you want to do this is so that your primer sticks but to get a real professional job you want to be able to uh, put an abrasive um, surface to wherever you're going to be shooting a primer or a, a sealer or something like that and you can't always do it with sandpaper sandpaper won't always conform to the uh, you know, the holes and stuff that's one reason why when you're wet sanding you'll have shiny spots so even the DA sander um, I mean I wet sanded this really good but it still had a few spots that were a little bit shiny it got sanded anyways but I'm going to go ahead and run a scuffy pad over it that way I'm for sure even though this and, and, and tip two, even though it's not seen, because this is behind the fender when the door shuts, but even though it's not seen, treat it like it's going to be finished, like it's going to be a, a seen product, because it's just professional. And somebody opens up the door and sees a flaky paint, um, sees flaky paint or something like that, or you know, or dry spray or something that's really horrible looking, it looks like a trashy job. And you know what I mean, if you go and check out a car to buy, you're not going to want to uh, buy a car that's got dried up flaky paint inside the door jams or uh, under the trunk or under the hood. So if you're doing a job for yourself or somebody else, why, why do crappy work? And now the door is primered. It looks pretty good. And what it is, I, I shot that way, over the edges that way. None got up underneath and actually to where I've got to uh, paint. I've got to change that color to a lighter blue. But uh, that's why I taped off that hit hinges. It's got to be painted too. Now I just unmask it and then uh, when the car gets here I'll hang the door on the car. Another thing that I'm going to fix is the back bumper. And only the back bumper has uh, actually got peeling clear coat and there is no way to fix peeling clear coat other than just repaint it. 
I have other videos on that, but I'll do be doing a repair on this as well. Okay, this is after I've I run the DA on it and then I pretty much hand sanded it after that. And let's see if we can get down here to see. I have sanded because it was peeling up here, I have sanded way back here to where the clear is still bonded to the base color. Um, and that's what you want to do. Unfortunately, sometimes this is what you get right here. I mean, there's just no way. It's hard to sand just the clear and not take off the color. And a lot of times when the uh, clear is peeling, the color is uh, not bonded anymore either. And that was the case here. I started seeing the color flake off when I was sanding it. So, But this is the step that you do before you actually put the color to it paint it. And this is the finished product. And you can see the bodywork on the door is pretty good. There's no dents and stuff like there were. Now I blended the paint on the panel behind and in front of the door. And in all honesty, the when I painted the back bumper, it really needed to be blended onto the fenders and stuff. And I did not do that. You can see a slight color change. But this was actually a budget job. And I did this whole job under $1,000, which was more than what she expected to get out of the job. But uh, she was extremely happy. But I hope you got the idea of doing body work and how it's done. And it's, at some point, I'm going to do a video on actually how to paint and to maybe show blending and stuff. But I hope you got the gist of doing body work for, out of this video. So I hope you found this video helpful and, and learned a little bit of something about body work. And if you didn't, uh, be sure to leave me a, a, a comment. Or I have a website. Uh, you can contact me there. Uh, I don't mind helping, so if you have uh, some uh, want have some questions and you want me to see your pictures, you can upload your pictures from my website and I can look at it and give you some advice. I don't charge for that. And um, if you have, like I said, any other questions, please leave comments. If you like the video, uh, be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned because I'm always coming up with something new. See you in the next one.